Hi everyone and welcome to my tutorial on basic rectangle collision in XNA. Uh, if you've seen the preview for this tutorial you know what the finished, is, finished article is going to look like. Uh, if not please just go to my demo video and I'll show the end result of what these tutorials will be. So uh, let's get started. If you create a new project, I've started this project, it's called uh, Simple Rectangle Collision and I've already added the assets that I'm going to use uh, green square for the player's rectangle and red square for the enemy rectangle. Okay so if we run that just empty screen. Okay so what we need first of all is the textures we're going to be using. So let's create a texture 2D object and we'll call it player bounds text and enemy bounds text. So we'll use two textures um, and they are going to be rectangles so let's actually create the rectangle objects as well. So it'll be the bounds and the enemy bounds. In fact let's keep this I call it player bounds. That's a bit better. Okay and then for those because we're going to be using an enemy uh, that's going to be moving, the rectangle is going to be moving, so we want to store its position and we'll store that in a vector 2 and let's just call that enemy position uh, and we'll also record the speed and we want the effect once we measure the collision we will want to turn the background colour a different colour. So let's have a colour variable uh, called background colour and let's go for a cool colour. What's a cool colour? I don't know. My aquamarine does sound pretty cool. Okay we'll go for aquamarine. Don't know what it looks like but we'll find out. Uh, and okay yeah so that should be enough I think. If not we can go back. So let's load the content. So what content have we got to load? We've got the uh, player bounds text that's going to be a texture 2d object and remember this is the asset name of the sprite so the asset name is here green square don't have the extension the PNG extension on it so just green square and we'll just repeat that but we want that for the enemy bounds text that's equal to content dot load texture 2d and this time it is the red square so he's going to be the bad guy red square okay what else did we have uh, oh let's just set the enemy position as well now enemy position is a vector 2 and so when you create a new vector 2 and it's got two values, a float x and a float y for its coordinates. So for this one I want it to start out of the screen. So let's just give it quite a high number, so say a thousand and let's say a hundred for its y coordinate. The reason why I want it to start out of the screen is it's going to start on the right hand side over here and we're going to make it go to the left and once it leaves the screen I want it to go back to its original position outside of the screen and just repeat so that way it just keeps repeating so let's hope that works um, because I think default wise I think it's 800 by 600 I think so it's 1000 should be outside of this screen uh, if not we can always add this later on so that's enough I think for loading content so now we can go on to our update method from here this is where all the logic happens so let's start off with what we were let's well any position as well as fresh in my head we want the x coordinate not the z the x coordinate um, to go left because we want the enemy from the right to the left so the x value 0 is over here to well thousands probably around over here so we want it to go minus equals the speed so what that's going to do is that's going to take away the speed value which is 10 off of the current enemy position, enemy, enemy position x's value. That is the same, this minus equals, it's the same as doing 
um, is equal to enemy position dot x minus speed. It's just a lot easier way of writing it. It's minus equals. I could do the same with plus equals. So that's going to update the position of x minus speed and that's just going to keep continuing. So what we might want to do now is we might want to put in the condition for when the enemy leaves the screen and wants it to reset back to the original position. So we'll use an if statement for that. So if any position dot x and think about this here, the x coordinate is the left side of the rectangle. So we actually want it once the whole rectangle is left the screen. So to get that what we'll do is we will add on to the enemy, pos enemy position x's value the textures, textures width and if that's less than zero then we'll reset it. So think about that, that is the x coordinate gets the top left value of the, or of the rectangle. So the top left value of the rectangle, if, that, if this cursor was the top left value, that's it there. But then it would suddenly, you'd still see some of the rectangle uh, when it resets position. We don't want that. We only want it to vanish once the whole rectangle is outside of the screen. And that's what that achieves there. Okay, so we just, it's easy enough. All we need to do is set any position dot x back to a thousand. Done. Okay, now what we now need to do is actually set the position the bounds yeah in fact should have that before the if statement so the player bounds is a rectangle so when you create a new rectangle it will have let's just say give it a static x and y coordinate of 100 100 and we'll give it a width of 50 and a height of 100 pixels Okay, and let's just do the exact same with the enemy bounds. Because new rectangle. Uh, now we're actually going to be using the enemy position as the x and y coordinates. So that's enemy position dot x and enemy position dot y, and we'll give it the same width and height of the player bounds. Okay, so that rectangle is ah yeah. Well, yeah, because these are float to values it's saying as an error because the rectangle should be int, 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 int. They should all be integers. These two are integers, so that's fine, but these two are floats. So all we need to do is cast and these types to an integer. So now the rectangle bounds is set to the value of the x coordinate of the position and the y coordinate that gets updated each time the update is called and it will have a width and height of 15100. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to, this is where we'll set the logic for when a collision happens. So this is really simple using X and A. It's got methods already available to you for you to use. So use the player bounds and use the method intersects. So the intersects method requires a prop, uh, rectangle as a property. So we want it to check when it intersects the enemy bounds. And when that happens, we want to set the background color to, let's say, a red. Red. I don't want a deep red, so let's go for pale violet red. And so that we can see the collision running, we'll slow down. It's quite slow, so we can see it happening. Uh, and obviously you want to set it back, the background colour back after it's stopped colliding and we'll just set it back to what it was, which I think was uh, aquamarine, wasn't it? Yeah, aquamarine. And set the speed back as well, otherwise we'll be waiting ages for another collision to happen. Okay, that's, that's it, that's it, that's all the logic done. Now all we need to do is draw it. So, as always, start off with sprite batch dot begin. And there's always a sprite batch dot end wherever there's a begin. And now we just need to draw the two, uh, the player and the enemy textures. So sprite batch dot draw um, player bounds texture it requires a rectangle. We've already got that. It's player bounds and color dot white. We don't want any tint. 
and exactly the same thing again but this time it is the enemy bounce texture and the enemy bounce rectangle same color dot white and if we run that fingers crossed I think that think that's everything we'll soon find out if it's not there we go two rectangles oh yeah I have forgot something forgot to change this to the background color okay here we go so there we go collision happens slow it down and then reset back collision happening still happening once it leaves a the rectangle then yep back again in fact what we'll do is just so we can see the rectangles a bit better we'll add a bit of transparency to both of the rectangles okay so with x and a4 it's really easy just have a float transparency and we'll give it a 0.3 that's like 30 30 percent transparency and all you have to do is add uh, multiply this value with the float value and that will make those objects transparent there we go and now we can actually see the collisions a bit better as well we can see exactly when it leaves the rectangle and when it inserted into the rectangle, <laughs> intersected the rectangle. Uh, okay, so that's that. I hope that was uh, quite clear. Please, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Uh, I'm doing another tutorial as well. So what we'll do is we'll replace those rectangles with an actual sprite and we'll animate that sprite with a new animation class and that will get us started uh, on the process of making possibly like just a very simple platform game or some kind of jump and avoid. Yeah, some, something quite cool I know, think of something uh, but please like I say please uh, put any comments on what you would like to see and if anything's not working please let me know and I'll try and help you okay thank you